Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for stopping by the channel. So for this video, it's really going to be a question and answer session. Uh, I've received a lot of great questions from YouTube and Instagram that I'd like to get to. And I'm also going to be talking about my 10k subscriber giveaway that's happening this month as well. But before diving in, I just want to pause and thank you guys as viewers for supporting this content for the past six years. Um, it's been a really good hobby for me, having a YouTube channel, and getting past 10,000 subscribers was really one of my ultimate goals. So thank you. Now diving into the questions, the first one comes from Mark over at Average Bros. Great YouTube channel, by the way. He asks, what future segments or formats, if any, have you looked forward to creating as your channel continues to grow? Well, I do want to get back into doing some live streams. Uh, this is something I used to do more frequently a couple of years ago, uh, but then my family started to grow. Um, I've taken on more responsibilities with work, so having consistent live stream schedules has been challenging. But I do want to reach out to some other YouTubers or watch enthusiasts and bring them on for a live stream every now and again. Another thing I want to get back into doing is helping to organize some local or even national watch meetups. And in fact, I have somewhat of a hand in helping organize the Toronto Timepiece Show. This event is happening September 27th through the 29th of this year. And I'm going to link to their website in the uh, description of this video. So please be sure to check that out. If you're interested in attending, it's going to be a huge watch event. Uh, the next question comes from WarehouseGuy74. He's actually a good friend and local Londoner. He asks, after all your years of collecting, what advice would you give someone just getting into collecting? Well, I know starting off, I made a lot of impulse buying decisions without really consulting um, other watch enthusiasts. So if you can actually get the opportunity to make friends in this community, maybe they can guide some of your decisions early on, that might be helpful. But that being said, I've also learned not to buy into the hype or marketing around new watches. You should really discern your personal tastes and buy what you like. You might make some mistakes along the way, but that's really going to help you tease out what you like in a watch versus don't want. And you shouldn't really be falling victim to a lot of marketing. I know I have been in the past and regretted it. Uh, the next question comes from James Saad. Which watches in your current collection would you never sell? So if you follow my channel for a bit, you know my collection is fairly fluid. I usually have about a dozen watches or so at a time, but there's three I can think of that I would never sell. The first one is the watch on my wrist. This is my Grand Seiko SBGN003, the first Grand Seiko that I actually ended up purchasing around 2019. Now regrettably, after about three years of ownership, I sold that particular watch. And then I've been trying to source another one ever since. And luckily, my Grand Seiko authorized dealer was able to pick one up, even though they're discontinued. So now that I got it back on the wrist, it's not going anywhere. The second watch I would never sell is my Saab 035. That is the Saab with the um, ivory white dial. And I was very impressed. It's one of the more affordable Seikos I owned early on. Probably the longest watch I've owned in my collection, actually. And I actually ended up purchasing the Saab 033, same watch but with a black dial, a little bit later. Now the story is, is that I gifted my twin brother the Saab 033, so he has the black dial, I got the white dial. It's kind of like our yin-yang dynamic, so for that reason, I'm never going to sell that watch. And the final watch I'd never sell is my Rolex Explorer. I have the discontinued 39mm version. That's the 214270. And it's the one watch that I just feel confident wearing and it would go with pretty much anything that I own. Additionally, it's been on a lot of trips with me and it's the watch that I wore on my wedding day. So for those reasons, those watches are definitely keepers in my collection. So the next question to come in is from Young Excellency. Um, he asks, what would your perfect Grand Seiko look like? Spring drive, automatic manual quartz, or the case, etc. I actually love this question because Grand Seiko is my favorite brand. And I would have to say it would really be the marriage of two different models. 
The first one being the Grand Seiko SBGN 017. This is a very limited 9F quartz GMT. It's actually very similar to my current SBGN 003, but it has a stunning textured white dial. And I'd love to see that design, but fitted in the Grand Seiko Mist Flake case, which utilizes the Evolution 9 series of case, which is very comfortable to wear. It comes in at 41 millimeters on the Mist Flake, and it's done in titanium, which is also very nice. I'd probably keep the titanium bracelet on the Mist Flake as well, but have it taper more from 22 millimeters at the head of the watch down to about 18 at the clasp. And if Grand Seiko could somehow engineer a class with on-the-fly micro-adjustment, that would also be stellar. That's rumored to be in the works, but it hasn't happened just yet. All right, the next question comes from Watch It Walid. I believe he's another watch enthusiast in the greater Toronto area. And he asks, how has watch collecting and your video channel affected your life in positive and negative ways? Well, let me start off with the positives. I think... It's been a very good creative outlet for me to have a YouTube channel. I'm a very reserved and introverted person by nature, but putting out YouTube content has helped me come out of my shell just a little bit. It's also enabled me to learn more, not just about watchmaking, but about photography and videography when considering the aspects that it takes to put together good YouTube content. I also really appreciate the opportunity to collaborate with independent watch brands. They tend to send me watches to review, sometimes even give, get to keep some free swag, which is really nice as well. And lastly, just engaging more in the watch enthusiast community and getting to know people has been a blast. Now, in terms of some negatives, I will say that having this channel has pushed me to make content or make some impulsive buying decisions to generate content. So financially, it hasn't always been the best move. And lastly, I mean, sometimes YouTube can be a negative place when you're looking at comments. Some of the feedback I've received for my videos or other content hasn't always been well received, and that's okay. You tend to take that information in strides. The next question is from West Braddock, 553, and he asks, if you could get a Grail watch at 20% below retail, but not the dial color you want, would you do it? That's a fun question. Uh, for me, I think a Grail watch would have to tick all of my boxes, and that includes the dial color. So as tempting as it would be to get a discount on this particular type of watch, I wouldn't really consider it a Grail if I couldn't get it the colorway I wanted. So I wouldn't personally do that. And the last question comes in from Griffin14. What is your favorite complication? Well, outside of my wife, <laughs> I really like the day-date complication. I think it's very practical and underappreciated by many different watch brands. I can recall that one of my very first Swiss automatic watches was the Hamilton Khaki King that had the full day and then the date display at the 12 o'clock position, and I really enjoyed it. I really wish other brands like Grand Seiko would adopt that type of complication in some of their models, but it hasn't happened just yet. All right, so now that we got through the questions, let me talk to you about the details for my 10K subscriber giveaway. If you want to enter this contest, it's extremely easy to do. All you have to do is fill out the Google form that is linked in the description of this video. Don't worry, it's a very short form and I'm not gonna spam you with anything other than to inform you if you're one of the winners. Now you're eligible to enter this content up until July 18th, at which point I'm going to stop accepting entries and winners will be randomly selected and then notified um, via my official Everyday Watch Guy Gmail account. Now these winners were also going to be announced on an upcoming live stream too. And again, good luck. I think your odds are pretty good. And let me show you some of the swag that you're up for getting. So there's actually two prize packs that you can win. Uh, the first one is going to be for this Zelos Nova 2 that I recently reviewed. Um, it's pretty much a brand new watch, kindly gifted to the channel by Elshin over at Zelos. These retail for $749 and they tend to sell out really quickly. So um, one winner is going to uh, receive the uh, Zelos Nova 2. 
And the second winner is going to win this Addy's Dive Pilot Watch. Another timepiece that was reviewed not too long ago on my channel. Uh, I think it's a really great pilot watch that checks a lot of boxes, but it's a little bit more affordable. I purchased this watch myself for around 100 Canadian dollars. And I'm also going to throw in um, a nice pilot style strap from Strapsco that I also purchased a while back but never wore. So thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you enjoy the content, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And good luck uh, with the contest. Uh, I look forward to more put putting out more content in the future.